hi welcome back to my channel and this is a sound off on the real housewives of potomac so candace then let the demon into her house bad 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 idea i don't know why candace did that ashley don't like you but anyway she let her in the house they chit-chatting i really don't know what the point of this little one-on-one -on -one was about Candace is reminding us that, you know, Ashley brought her to the group, but it's like, girl, Ashley haven't liked you since season three. Like she, you don't owe her nothing. You really, really, really don't. You just don't, girl. But anyways, so Mia's having a little family scene at the house with the kiddos and her husband. And that's also was a non-scene, but I guess we learned from this scene that even G is confused about Mia's health. Chow, I don't know. Um, Mia lets us know that she was the other woman during G's um, last marriage. But I thought we knew that already. Because remember she said last year that um, she met Gordon when he was married to the third wife. So I just pretty much, I connected the dots a long time ago. So I felt like we all knew this. But okay, she, she decides to air herself out. Child, I guess. So Karen and Ashley meet up with Wendy at a tulips farm. I think that's what they call it. Or a garden. I don't know. But y'all saw it. And um, immediately she brings up Schmeagle's vasectomy. And then Karen was like, oh, you know, how do you feel about that? Girl, I don't give two shits. So now you don't give two shits. But weren't you just talking about this in a somber manner to Mia and Sharice just last episode? And then telling the producers, you know, it's so final and I don't know how I feel. And da, 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 da. I guess. She also tells Karen that, you know, she's not ready to talk about the divorce, even though she's been talking about the divorce. Ashley be lying, child. She be lying and then she be telling on herself. Because you've been talking about this since episode one. You were talking about this openly at the spring fling. And now you don't want to talk about it. Child, I can keep up with her lies. So they keep playing these flashbacks of like Mia and Ashley talking to Wendy. Telling her that she's condescending and how she comes off to the ladies in the group and all this other shit. And they showed a couple of flashbacks of this particular event. But they ain't show us the event. So I don't know what that was. But you know... That's how reality TV works, I guess. Now this whole Wendy is so condescending and Wendy is this and Wendy is that BS. I'm not, I'm not gonna be able to do too much of that. I'm really not because all of you bitches have some type of character flaw. So if we all gonna pile on Wendy, I'm not here for it. Actually, you've definitely been condescending a time or two on this show, so stop. But anyway. So Wendy lets Karen and Ashley know that she's gonna be hosting a burn session at this winery or at the vineyard, whatever. And um, she's gonna extend an invitation to everybody. So she lets them know that she's gonna do it in a group text because she, she wants, wants Giselle and Robin to know that they got the same invitation as everyone else, okay? And Ashley's not here for that. Ashley's like, maybe you should do it this way and maybe you should do it that way. She's basically trying to coach Wendy on how to kiss Giselle and Robin's ass properly. And Wendy's like, mm, no, I ain't gonna do that. And she won't let it go until Wendy had to finally like let her know, like, girl, stop. Stop it. They need to be happy I'm even extending an invitation to them. And Wendy right. Because to be honest, if Wendy were me, if I were Wendy, I would send the group text, invite everybody. And then at the end, I would say, but I totally understand if Robin can't make it. No hard feelings. Since that's the game we playing, since we gonna be petty, I would be petty too. That's what I would have done. Okay, so it's the day of Wendy's burn session event at the vineyard, and apparently this is a long ass drive. And Wendy, Ashley are riding together, and then the rest of the ladies are riding together in the sprinter van. Ciao. Wendy's telling Ashley how her mother was recently hospitalized after a routine doctor's visit. And then she also lets us know that she herself has kidney stones. And girl, kidney stones are the devil. I don't know how many signs you need, Wendy, but do, do you need Jesus to come and tap you on your forehead to tell you to slow down? Because girl, that's, that's too much. You need to have a seat. You need to have a seat. 
this Nigerian lounge that you want to open up with Peter. No, no. Eddie need to put his foot down and say, no, you need to take care of you. Talking about she don't want to end up like her mom. Girl, I don't even want to say what I'm thinking, but girl, you need to chill. You need to slow down and stop it and take care of you first. Okay, so the ladies arrive at the vineyard and just don't waste no time getting down to the mess, okay? She brings up Ashley's divorce being leaked to the press. How people are online going crazy with the memes and making fun of the divorce. And I told y'all Giselle be in these comments. I told y'all she be reading the comments. Hmm. But anywho, she's saying all of this and for Ashley to be her friend, she don't care nothing about Ashley's mood. And Ashley's like, you know, I just... I just don't want it being at the expense of my children's father. And it's just like, girl, shut up. Shut up. I promise Giselle might as well have just said to Ashley, girl, so this is what divorce, no divorce look like. <laughs> because girl, like, but this your friend, right? This your friend. Okay. So Wendy is explaining to the ladies how this burn session goes. Everybody's going to have their moment in the hot seat and we're going to write down on this piece of paper things we got to get through and we're going to burn them. And if you don't got nothing to get through, then we're going to uplift each other. Seems easy enough. Wendy's up first. And for the most part, everybody had nice things to say to Wendy until it came down to Mia. But nobody cared what Mia got to say. But she says that Wendy's dismissive and it's like, girl, I would be dismissive of you as well. Like upon meeting her, you tried to say that she was jealous of you or that she was insecure about you and that her husband couldn't even look you in your eye. Like, girl, I would dismiss you too. I would. I wouldn't argue with you. So Robin is like, look, you and I are like oil and water and I'm fine with that. I'm fine with it just being like that. And Ashley's like, did you receive that? Did you hear that? And Candace, Ashley, Giselle, they're all chiming in. And I don't even understand why Robin came because you got the invitation. You saw what the invitation was. Why did you come? Just like how you didn't want her at your event. Why did you come to her event? Robin, you really gonna make this season difficult for me, girl, huh? So Giselle says in her confessional that the entire time that she's known Wendy, Wendy is never accountable for anything. And I'm like, for what? Then? For what? Accountable for what? What are you talking about? Giselle, you about to piss me off. Giselle, you body shamed her last season. Then you brought rumors to the show about her husband cheating on her. And so in return, she gave you hell for the rest of the season. I don't see the problem. I just don't. Now, I ain't gonna lie. Last season, I was leaning more towards Giselle's side. I think Wendy did a little bit too much. There's some things that I would have handled differently. But after watching these first four episodes of this season, I have come to realize that Wendy did not overreact. Wendy did just what she needed to do to get you up off of her. So she gave you hell. You started with her. I'm so sick of them playing with people and then telling people how to react. Y'all want to play in people's face and then they're not supposed to react. They have to follow a certain guideline on how they respond to you. Giselle, go to hell. If you didn't want a problem with Wendy, you shouldn't have started a problem with Wendy. Accountable for what? She don't owe you a damn thing. You started with this woman. You don't even bring your real life situations to the show. And then you tried to do that shit that you did to her last season. You're lucky. You're lucky that that's all she did was act a fool. You poked the bear and then you got mad when the bear reacted. Girl, bye. So Ashley and Candace are trying to be mediators. And this is not going to work. Um, <laughs> it's just not working. It goes all the way left because they asked Robin where her issue with Wendy is. And my thing is, if she already said that she good with them not being cool, y'all should just left that alone. But Robin was like, don't tell people that I tried to fight you. Child, what'd she say that for? Because now they start going over the details of what happened. And Robin, Robin, you, 
Robin, this is the second time you're not recalling things the right way. This is the second time you're recalling things the wrong way as it pertains to you and Wendy's issues. She claims that Sharice never had to put no hands on her, never had to hold her back. And the receipts showed that that was a lie. She Not only did she have to hold you back with her hands, she had to get up and push you back. She called Sharice and her and Giselle. Oh, my God. This is why y'all get... That's why they people talk about y'all the way that they do. Because Giselle over there like a cheerleader, like a little chihuahua barking. She sounds so damn stupid because Giselle, your ass wasn't there. You should have shut up. But anyways, they call Sharice and Sharice co-signs the bullshit. And I'm like, Sharice. So y'all all just going to embarrass me this season. Okay, this is why. Sharice, why you lie at your grown big ass age? Why would you lie when you know y'all were being recorded? That's what I don't understand. You know you're being filmed, right? Giselle is over there like a 12-year-old. Like, why the lies? Why the lies? And it's just like, Giselle, as they're doing this, all the receipts are playing. And it's just like, Giselle and Robin looked a fool. And then Robin is like, you are horrible, horrible. And it's just like. Robin and Giselle, y'all look so fucking dumb. I, I can't. I cannot. I cannot. Y'all both need to go to timeout. Go face the wall. Because what was that? My thing with Robin and Giselle is like, you guys were both given the floor to, us, you know, say what y'all had to say and try to work it out. And y'all both declined. Y'all said y'all were good on Wendy. Y'all didn't want to fool with her. Y'all were good. Y'all good where y'all at. And then... Next thing you know, y'all start screaming and yelling and carrying on. And I don't understand where all this emotion is coming from. It's like, if you don't give a fuck about her and you don't want to deal with her, you don't want to be cool with her. Why are you so mad? Like last year when Wendy was acting a fool, if you had been mad like that last year, I would understand. But you didn't care. So this makes me feel like you're turning up because for the cameras. You're turning up because everyone has told you how boring you are. Everyone has told Giselle how she doesn't bring nothing to the show. It's like y'all were looking. I said last episode that Wendy is always looking for a moment. And it seemed like you took a page out of her book. You was definitely for sure looking for a moment. And then you storm off. And your good Judy didn't even follow behind you to see if you was okay. I guess production told her you better stay seated. I don't know. It's just. Y'all looked. Y'all really embarrassed y'all selves this episode. That's all I know. Giselle keeps saying how Wendy is fake and phony. But from where I'm sitting, the people that's looking fake and phony is you and Robin for accepting her invitation. Because y'all knew this was her event, right? Like y'all got the text from Wendy and y'all still decided to come. So who's fake? So Chow, Ashley decides that she got some things to tell Miss Candace. I don't know if anybody's ever told you, Ashley, but every single time you decide to come for Candace, you get embarrassed. You get embarrassed every single time, but you keep doing it. So let's get into that. So Ashley's like, yeah, I heard from my friend Deborah that at the spring fling party, Chris was being real flirty with her. She went to get a drink and he was all in her face. And she was asking me, are you guys still together? And it's like, is she smirking? And so Candace is like, girl, what is the purpose of this? Like, Candace is like, girl, bye. This is some bullshit. You was at my house the other day. You didn't say nothing about it. Well, this just came to me. This just came to me. That's some BS. That's some BS because, okay, Ashley Funny Looking Friend was in the episode when they went to Springs Fling. That was the first episode, if I'm not mistaken. And then I believe the second episode, she came to your house to have a play date. Her son and your two boys. And she didn't think to tell you then because she was asking questions about everybody. She asked you, were you going to collab with Candace? 
as if that was an option. So she didn't tell you then. She came to your house after the spring fling party and she didn't tell you then. She waits until this time to tell you. Actually, you're a liar and the truth ain't in you. You, I think Ashley was being on her best behavior when she found out that Candace was doing her egg retrieval process. And once Candace told her she put that on hold, Ashley was like, Giselle, girl, we back in business. We coming for Chris. At the vineyard, it's going down. Because as she's telling this to Candace, Giselle's like opening her eyes. Like, Giselle, you already knew she was going to tell Candace this. Y'all in cahoots together. Y'all not fooling the people. We are not dumb. Bye bye. Ashley says to Candace, it don't feel good, huh? And it was just like, yeah, Ashley, you're a piece of trash. Um, but Candace, girl, you didn't listen. And this is what we was telling you. We've been telling you via Twitter that girl, get the fuck away from Ashley. She don't mean you no good. But you went and decided to play with the serpent. And this is what happens. This is what happens. See, now I'm starting to kind of put together how this plot probably went. See, Giselle was, Giselle and Ashley, they plot like they always do. The beef was always supposed to be Ashley versus Candace. It was always supposed to be Ashley versus Candace. But, but Ashley kind of backed off because she didn't want to look bad when Candace was telling people that she's doing her, you know, IVF. Giselle ended up looking crazy. Well, now Ashley has taken the reins of this operation. And y'all both trash. Y'all are trash. Y'all are trash. All the times, Ashley, you have defended your creepy husband, your predator of a husband. And now Chris is wrong because he looked this way, because he was friendly with this person, because he spoke to this person. Now y'all trying to paint him with the predator brush. Talking about some, well, he was looking at Mia too. He was staring Mia down. And y'all don't think we don't see that this is a plot. But you know what I find funny is Ashley got all this smoke for Candace, but Giselle has been the main one writing you about your marriage to Schmeagle from day one. From season one, she's been coming for your neck for you and Michael. She has reveled in every embarrassing thing that has happened to you and your husband. But your smoke is only for Candace. I don't know what kind of arrangement y'all made, what kind of oath y'all took, but you don't never come for Giselle. Never. And Giselle has come for your marriage since season one, season two. They laughed at you at the season two reunion when Michael revealed that you guys were separated then and he kicked you out of the, the condo. But your smoke is only for Candace. And that's fine. I just hope Candace now realizes once and for all that these heifers are not your friends. Even Wendy. But Wendy ain't your friend either, girl. Don't none of them defend you the way you Candace has defended every single one of those women at that table. She defended Giselle when she was drowning in the binder. She defends Robin, Karen. Karen was the main one as she's defended everybody sitting at that table. Even me, a big foot ass. And they always come for her. So I just hope that a very valuable lesson. You know, I was saying, Chris, we all were saying, Chris, you too damn friendly. Hope you learned your lesson with that one. Candace, you are also very friendly, and I hope you learned your lesson with that. These group of women, they don't mean you no well. They're going to continuously keep coming for you. Girl, you the threat. Like Nene would say, girl, you the threat. They're going to keep coming for you. But yeah, they leave us with another cliffhanger, and we already done seen the preview where Candace... <laughs> Candace oh, my God, Candace. Candace... She said, yeah, Michael the went over there sucking, da, 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 and she dropped some names. I don't know why, Ashley, you keep coming for Candace, because every time you come for Candace, you get embarrassed. You get embarrassed every single time. Every time. And this time, we all going to enjoy it. Ain't nobody going to nobody gonna be feeling no kind of bad for you, Ashley. You tried it. You tried it. I'm going to thoroughly enjoy oh, Candace reading you down because it's what you deserve.
Now y'all done put Michael Business in the street that he was sucking ding ling up and through. He on the client list. It's what you wanted. It's what you wanted. I always say Ashley get away with everything. I don't think you're getting away with it this time, sweetheart. But yeah. <laughs> This was definitely made up for last week's boring ass filler episode. I can tell you that much. But um, yeah, please like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. <laughs>